this farmer is looking out onto his land. He's proud of what he's done. He's proud of what he owns. And uh, he he looks out and he sees this tree, this familiar this familiar tree, this, this apple tree that's never actually really bore fruit before. And uh, he looks out onto it and the tree actually has apples. And, he's, um, and so he's excited. He walks out to the tree walks his way through the dells and climbs up the hill and he looks at the tree and he shakes the tree just to get an apple and an apple drops and um, suddenly this this rabbit appears and he thinks oh that's kind of nice so he shakes the tree a little bit more and a couple more apples drop and he looks out and there's four rabbits and so he decides <clears throat> you know, to keep this going. So he shakes the tree, he shakes it really, really hard until more apples drop. And he looks out and there's like 20 rabbits. And um, so he shakes it and he shakes it and he shakes the tree. He keeps shaking it until every apple is falling off the tree. And he looks out, there's like 100 rabbits. And, um, and he's, he's really proud, he's really happy. So he shakes it, he shakes it, he shakes the tree until every leaf's falling off the tree. And at this point, there's like 500 rabbits. And, um, and so he gets really excited and he shakes the tree, he really throttles it, he shakes it, he shakes it, he shakes it until, until every little twig has fallen off of the tree. And, uh, and he looks out at this point, there's uh, upwards and around a thousand rabbits around him. This is nice. So he keeps shaking it, he shakes the tree, he shakes the tree, he shakes the tree, he shakes the tree until, until all the branches have fallen off the tree. And he looks out and there's, there's a good 2,000 rabbits. So he decides to keep shaking it and he shakes the tree and he shakes the tree and he shakes the tree until all of the big limbs and all of the branches have really fallen off. And he looks out and at this point, I mean, there's a good 4,000 rabbits. So he gets excited and he shakes the tree 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 and all of the bark's falling off, and at this point, you know, there's something upwards and around like 9,000 rabbits, and uh, as far as you can see, I mean, there's, there's rabbits. So he shakes the tree, and he shakes the tree, and he shakes the tree, and he just keeps shaking it and shaking it until all of, um, you know, until all of that, like, outer layers, really, like, the outer rings have fallen out, and at this point, I mean, there's... I don't even know, um, 20,000 rabbits. And so he keeps shaking the tree and he keeps shaking the tree and he keeps shaking the tree and shakes it and he shakes it and he shakes it and he's really throttling it, he's really into it, he's really, really, really shaking the tree. And at this point, I mean, there's just nothing left, you know? I mean, it's just, it's just like a, a narrow, you know, wooden thing sticking out of the ground and he looks out and there's really, I mean, there's just an insane amount of rabbits. And so, you know, he stops and he looks at the tree and he looks at the rabbits and he thinks to himself, all right, it's official. I've got more rabbits than I can shake a stick at. <laughs> so, um, you're gonna like this one. So there's this um, prairie dog, and he's living. He's living on the prairie. A zoo. But he's living on the prairie. This one, and um, and he, you know, he he's got a big family gathering. He's kind of moved away. Uh, he just wanted to try something different for a while, and he got his own burrow a hole in the ground is I mean that kind of like he burrowed a hole not and um, and uh, he's he, he gets invited invited to this family gathering and he's he's kind of excited because he hasn't really talked to them in a while like he left on bad terms and um, and so he gets he gets a bunch of balloons together like some party balloons and um, he's in this, this hole, and he fills up the balloons, and, and he's like, okay, I'm ready to go to this big family reunion um, on the other side of the hill, bluff.
fourth uh, thing. And um, and so he, he tries to crawl out of the hole, but then he realizes, like, he's got so many balloons, it's hard to get through the hole. So he, like, um, he pulls on the balloons. And, and he's, like, crawling through the hole, and getting all that dirt, you know, digging. And, um, and, uh, and, you know, he's pulling, he's pulling, he's pulling this, this big cluster of balloons through this hole, and he finally gets out, and he, he breaks out of the prairie dog hole, and he looks out onto the prairie. It's nice. If you've ever been to the prairie, it's a nice view. <laughs> and, um, and he just kind of looks out onto the grass, and the wind blowing, and, you know, it, it looks like waves. Lewis and Clark were terrified. The first time they went to the prairie, because they like, if you could imagine the Great Plains, having never been to the Great Plains before, if you could imagine it, um, it's it's kind of a trip. Like, at some point in their journey, they actually thought that it would go on forever. And this is real; you could look it up. And they thought the prairie would go on forever, so. They were literally afraid. Uh, like, there's two types of agoraphobia. There's agoraphobia where you're afraid of crowds, and there's also agoraphobia where you're afraid of wide open spaces. They've kind of locked it in, as far as I know, maybe I was misinformed, but they've locked it into like the same kind of phobia. And so the early explorers and settlers were actually scared. But this prairie dog wasn't, because that's where he grew up. And so he, he uh, walked out and he looked out onto the, you know, the beautiful prairie and the grass kind of flowing. And, um, and, you know, he was happy and he was going to see his family for the first time in a long time. And so he, he realizes, though, like he's got to hurry and so he has to keep his hand, he, he can't like have his hands occupied holding his balloon, so he ties the balloons around his waist, which has an interesting effect on the prairie dog, because he, it, it makes him somewhat weightless, like the moon landing, or, or like, like someone walking on the moon, not like the moon landing. And so he's excited, because he's kind of hopping through the grass. Like if you could close your eyes and kind of picture that feeling, it's a nice feeling. And so he's, he's hopping through the grass, like parting the blades, and the sun's kind of peeking through, and it's nice. And, um, and he feels like kind of the warmth of the prairie sun. And he makes his way, and as he gets closer to that familiar bluff where he grew up, he hears like what sounds like cheers and what sounds like joyous regalia. And so he's excited, like this is going to be really nice. And I'm going to see my... Uh, family, my prairie dog family, for the first time in a while, at least a while, and um, and so he makes his way through the grass. <clears throat> he gets to the top of the bluff and he looks down onto his former residence, and uh, and that's that's when he realizes that they weren't really they weren't really singing or cheering like happy sounds, but in fact, their his family was being ravished by coyotes. I, I don't like mean it to sound sad, but it was like, you could imagine that feeling. It, you could imagine it if you, it, earlier when I asked you to close your eyes and imagine it. If you've been doing that the whole time, then then you're, you know where I'm at. But if you haven't been doing that, then obviously you're kind of lost. In the story, at least. Not, I don't. I don't mean to like criticize your life choices. Anyways, so he looks down, and he sees his family um, being ravished by coy coyotes. It's a bad feeling, and so you know he has a normal reaction. He has a normal reaction that I I would think I would have, which is like, oh, I got to get out of here. And so he turns around. And he starts running back to his hole. He's got to go back. This is a failed adventure. My family is dead. And so he turns around and he starts making the same path with the familiar V that he carved through the blades. And, um, and he's kind of floating still, but this time it's not fun. This time it's like one of those terrible dreams where your legs don't move. 
the way that your legs are supposed to move and, and you can't punch as hard as you're supposed to punch or something like that because those balloons are tied around his waist and so he's floating through the grass which isn't a necessarily a good feeling at this point it's a totally different <laughs> feeling than what he had before and and uh and then he starts to realize that this is actually really bad because the coyotes are just following the balloons I have a large number of balloons um, tied to my waist, and they can follow that. Like, I can't hide in the grass anymore. That's obviously a really bad feeling. And so he's running through the grass, and he can hear the sounds of, like, the coyotes coming closer, like, rawr, 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 rawr. Or they don't make those noises. I actually grew up in the country. The coyotes don't make those noises. They make, like, yippy noises. Like, not, not Andy, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, uh, yeah, you know exactly what I, thank you so much, Abby. Uh, not that kind of yippee, but like yippee, like yip, yip. And so they're doing that. At, um, and he's uncomfortable. And so he, but he finally gets closer. If you've, uh, if you have, ha if you've had the pleasure of like going out towards like Devil's Tower, uh, or like a, you know, places where prairie dogs really live naturally, it, they they do a good job like clearing out. They clear out the the high rising grass around their holes. It's important to the story. So uh, you know, if you get close enough, if you get close enough to where you're supposed to be you can actually see a little bit further. So he makes a break through the grass and the grass is a little bit lower because it's near where his hole is that he burrowed. And, um, and he crawls down into the hole, but the coyotes have gotten really close to this point. He can, he can really hear him. And he's crawling in the hole, but those balloons are stuck. And he's like crawling into the hole and he's like, um, and he's like, uh, you know, he's, he's trying to get, get through the hole and then pop. You know, he hears the sound of the you know, balloon pop, and he thinks to himself, well, that's, that's probably the yellow balloon. I, have, I, I, I could imagine that's the yellow balloon popping. And then he crawls a little bit further, and it's like, pop, you know? And then he's like, he thinks to himself, well, there, that's the red one. That's the red balloon. And so he digs, and he digs, and he pulls, and he pulls, and then pop, you know, the blue balloon pops. Hold on. Just a second. And um, and the blue balloon pops, and then he digs and he digs, and then you know pop the yellow or uh, the green balloon pops. He knows it's the green balloon, and then he digs and he digs and he digs, and uh, another balloon pops, probably a purple one at that point. And um, and then he feels the tug of the coyotes pulling on that string around his waist, and he's horrified because he knows he's about to die in a painful way and he thinks to himself he thinks to himself uh, please take my wife boy are my wings tired <laughs> the other day this is actually a, this is actually a true uh, story uh, a couple weeks ago I was a couple of weeks ago, I was in the uh, I was in the desert. I was um, down by the Salton Sea area, and, um, and this lady comes up to me, and um, she she asks for a couple of dollars, and I asked her what for. I think it's a reasonable question. Not that I care how she's going to spend it, but I'm just curious. And, uh, and she says for water, oh, it's like <coughs> desert. We, uh, she comes up to me and, uh, she says to me, I have some water. And I said, all right, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, if I give you this money, I, I really hope you buy some water. And she says, yeah. And she says, you know, Bill. And I'm like, well, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, she says, yeah, he's a guy 
They finish the story. Cocky SP, let's hear it again. Thank you for attending the Wonder Valley Experimental number five. Another thrilling year comes to a close. Have a nice evening. Drive fast and take chances. <laughs>